finally gave me three times. <laughs> I got three takes. So hello, everyone. Yeah. Thank you so much for the New York Film Critics Circle. This really means the absolute world to me. And I'm so incredibly honored to receive this award in my hometown, in Manhattan, New York. This film is the story of a famous family, a real complicated and authentic Italian family. It's surely a wild and tragic story of the descendants of Guccio Gucci, the son of a merchant born in Tuscany in 1881, who helmed the origin of Gucci, which began as a humble leather saddle shop in 1906. It's the story of Guccio's sons, Rodolfo and Aldo, and their sons, Maurizio and Paolo. It's the story also of women who loved them and wanted to be one of them. Patrizia de Gianni. It's the story of an Italian family complicated by and rich in Italian culture. There's a sense in which I feel like I've been preparing for this whole my entire life. And I know I've put my whole life into it. And I know everybody in this room that's an artist, I know you all do that too. I know back in the I'm looking at you, and I just know that about you. And I wasn't born in Italy, but I am a Joe Marotta. And I'm a proud descendant of my Venetian and Sicilian ancestors. I fell in love with acting in New York, watching films about Italian families. I feel so lucky to have grown up with so many films representing families that look like me, that talk like mine, and laughed and yelled like my family. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mom. <laughs> I remember watching Sophia Loren and eating at a farm table in the countryside, speaking Italian, the wind blowing in her hair, her eyes piercing the screen, watching her hold in all the fear she had and covering it with strength, scene after scene. I've always been drawn to Italian culture uh, and the unique dynamics of Italian families. Learning to speak in a northern dialect felt like reading poetry to me. I spent, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you how hard I worked because I wanna remind you and thank you for giving me this award that you did okay. <laughs> um, I spent hundreds of hours reading uh, Gina Lola Brigida interviews aloud with this accent and other times just speaking constantly in this style, Patrizia never leaving me. Immersing myself in the glorious history of Italian art, religion, fashion, and music. It wasn't just about trying to transform myself. It was more importantly about tapping into a part of my heritage that's been with me since before I was even born. This was a passionate effort. I feel forever grateful to have experienced and memories I will forever hold in my heart in making House of Gucci. My true dream was to harness the generational power of my heritage and channel it into every scene. Every day I began work by um, putting my feet on the ground and feeling the Italian soil under my feet, knowing that it's where I came from and that it made me everything I am today. There's a particular texture of Italian love and friendship and business, and that's always really moved me. I, I, inhabiting the story of the Gucci's meant exploring the ways that men relate to each other, and like, as fathers and sons at baptisms, hugging and kissing, but as enemies and adversaries in boardrooms vying for power. Of course, this isn't entirely new ground in film. As a young girl, I watched, like all of you, the films of Scorsese yeah. and others. Uh, these stories of Italian-American families, usually the men uh, who affected their own downfall. But what about the women? I was endlessly brokenhearted by how men relate to women in these same spaces. 
women who were entirely disregarded for their intellect beyond the household, women who were rarely cherished except in motherhood or sexual capacities. Our film spans 30 years of Italian culture at the end of the 20th century. While this wasn't long ago, it was unimaginable that Patrizia, an outsider and a woman, certainly of a lower class, was able to situate herself at the Gucci table, influencing their business and steering their family empire. Or at least she thought so. Yeah. <laughs> Many people interpret Patrizia as an empire builder herself. I never believed that. My Patrizia is a survivor. She's not an empire builder. Her story echoes the perilous lengths women will go to in order to matter in this world. I don't think she ever truly thought of herself as cunning or strategic. I have always believed in her heart that she felt that she was doing what she taught she had to do to survive. To keep her place, her children, her family, her whole world. I remember a, right before a scene with Jack Houston where I was being served divorce papers at my daughter's school. I went over to Jack and I rarely broke character on set, but I said, I said, Jack, I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to yell at you for every fucking woman on earth. <laughs> and he said, that's okay. And I count myself really lucky that Ridley and Jeannie and Scott gave me the opportunity to inhabit my vision of Patrizia's story. And I don't know if anybody knows this, but this film would just absolutely not have been made without Jamie Scott, and she's the reason that I'm here, and uh, her belief in me is something I will never forget. And I, I, look, I look at Ridley and, and Jamie and as like mom and dad, and I, I miss them all the time. I'll never, I'll never forget the experience of living in Italy and being with them every day. I accept this award on behalf of my Italian ancestors and on behalf of my love for all things Italian. <laughs> this extends the legacy of my great family. My family came over on a boat through Ellis Island. The Gioguanotas from Palermo, Sicilia, the Calderones from Santa Lucia, the Ferries from Venezia and Braco, all in the early 1900s. Not knowing the English language, they assimilated and worked in mills and factories, sewing, my grandfather a carpenter, shoe cobbler, and veteran. They worked to provide for both born and unborn children so that we could have a better life. And to hopefully, as Patrizia would say, uh, earn enough money someday. I learned about our family struggles, illnesses and deaths that could not have been prevented, poverty, miscarriage after miscarriage, lack of education, a real life movie that I know continues to live on through me today. I was told this story since I was old enough to understand. If I simply think about my Italian heritage, it alone makes me cry. I don't know if you can relate to that when you just look at a family member and it all wells up inside of you how long we've all been doing this together. So finally, I'd like to thank the icons that anchored my performance and the greatest truths I had to offer. The truth of being raised by powerful, strong Italian women who knew how to fight for themselves. My Italian grandmothers, they taught me how to be tough and how to have endurance. My Italian mother, woo! Mom, you taught me how to be fearless. And you taught me never to take no for an answer. Or somebody said, no, you taught me to go find someone that says yes. <laughs> <laughs> and my sister, since we were young, and even now, when we talk, she always reminds me that I always have to find a way to be brave. So thank you to the New York Film Critics Circle for recognizing my performance as best actress this year. I can't even want to hear myself say it. 
In doing so, you have recognized all the women in my family because it was through them that I was able to create the heart and soul of this character, the one that she deserved. These women taught me how to have big feelings in a man's world. And then having big feelings is beautiful. <laughs> big feelings also to a lot of the world. People think it's really ugly. And they think women with big feelings are ugly. But it's not ugly. It's just real. And uh, for me, it's Italian. It's who we are. <laughs> We're hard work and big feelings. And also meatballs. <laughs> Or actually, in Italy, meatballs aren't a real thing. It would be the ragu. <laughs> so I want to thank my beautiful cast. I got really, really lucky with beautiful, amazing cast. I'd like to thank Bobby, my manager. Uh, you've been with me since I was a really young girl through some really hard times. You left everything and came to live with me in Italy to shoot this film. Thank you for doing that. I want to thank Brian Lord, my agent. I'd like to thank Sarah, my makeup artist, and Frederick Asperos, my hair artist. Thank you for every day going through the scenes with me, talking about the characters, allowing me to be her, and for never making it about the hair or the makeup or the fashion, but about her heart. Thank you to Kimolania. She's not here tonight, but. She's the reason I was on time every day. <laughs> John T. Gates for also not making the fashion the thing. Believe it or not, I'm a real pain about not wanting to care at all about wardrobe. <laughs> I care much more about the task at hand. Susan Batson, my wonderful acting teacher. Beatrice Bonicia, another acting teacher that I've worked a long time with. And was with me every day on set. I'd like to thank MGM for believing in me. And finally, uh, this award marks the end of a very long, beautiful journey that I'm really sad is ending. It's really hard to say goodbye to art because you've learned so much about yourself. But I will cherish this award as if it were handed to me by my ancestors because I know it came from my home. I danced on these streets. I learned how to sing on these streets. I, I auditioned and failed. And I'm still here. And you're still here for me. We're still here for each other. So I know that this came from you because you saw the authenticity in my performance. You could see my Italian New York heart. <laughs> so thank you so much. And um, to you all, I'm forever grateful. And I. I wish you all health and family and friendship and just the most beloved community. Thank you.